in the last lecture we discussed about the load effects on marine structures we also discussed something about the partial safety factors. So, we said that load is categorized depending upon the effects on structures as permanent load P, variable load live load L, then the deformation load D, then the environmental load E and the accident load A. These are basically the category of loads or I should say load effects on marine structures out of which you discussed about what should be the characteristic value of p, what is the variation because p is almost more or less determined by the higher level of accuracy. Live load has a difficulty, so we said on what format and what structure you want to apply, pick up the characteristic load depending upon that. As for the deformation load is concerned, we look for the maximum value of the characteristic component of the load and we were discussing about the environmental load, we had discussed about return period. So, we said return period if for example, is let us say 50 years, then it is understood that the characteristic load is likely to occur once in 50 years that is the meaning ok. Inverse of return period will give you the probability of exceedance of the load or I should say the characteristic load in any one year. Let us say for example, for wind load I have the return period as 100 years. So, I can quickly say the probability of exceedance of the wind load acting on the marine structure. is 1 by r which is 1 by 100 which is 0 0.01 that is the probability. So, 99 percent will not exceed 1 percent that is 0 0.01 it may exceed the value ok that is how it can be very clearly understood that what is the meaning of this. Now, let us quickly see what is the interest as far as the load effects on marine structures are concerned in the design part. Clearly understand the statement the inverse of return period gives me an understanding of probability of exceedance of the characteristic load in any one year. What I am interested is not this, what I am interested is what is the probability of exceedance of the characteristic load within the service life of the structure. Is that clear? I am interested in this statement actually. I want to know this because that is my design component. I want to know this what is my exceedance or what is my probability of exceedance of this characteristic load within the service life of the structure. So, we already seen that 1 by r gives me the probability of exceedance in any one year. So, this gives me in any one year. So, I should say 1 minus 1 by r will give me the probability of non exceedance of this ok, non exceedance. in any one year. I am looking for the non exceedance or probability of exceedance in service life. Let us say the 
the service life of the structure is n years. Okay. Then the probability that the characteristic law does not exceed within the service life of the structure can be written as 1 minus 1 by r to the power n but what I am interested I am interested in probability of exceedance in service life what I have got is probability of non exceedance in the service life. So, I should say probability of exceedance of the character load within the service life should be 1 minus 1 minus 1 by r to the power n is that ok right. So, this will give me probability of exceedance of the characteristic load within the service life of the star is it not. Let us take an example. Let us say n is 20 years and return period is 50 years. Let us see what is the probability. So, probability of exceedance in 20 years is 1 minus 1 minus 1 by 50 of 20. Can you find out this value? You should come with the calculators from the next class onwards because we are doing numerical. It's not you know you need not have to look at my face. Huh? How much is this? Yeah. So what does it mean? There is a high probability of exceedance of the characteristic load within the service life of the structure. So, the percent is very high is it not. So, a safety factor should account for such probabilities of exceedance. Just for understanding let us compare, let us say service life is 10 years and return period is 100 years. What do you mean by 100 years? The characteristic load will get repeated or will reoccur at least once in 100 years. So, very long time service life is 10 years. Can you calculate P 10 that is 9 percent. So, what does it mean? To make it more illustrative, I will keep n as 10, but r as 50. 
same return period, but service life is reduced. Let us see what happens. Okay. Let us compare the answer of this with that of this first, write the inference, I will remove this. The following inferences can be quickly drawn from these two examples as I have shown here. For the same return period, if the service life is reduced, probability of exceedance of characteristic load is reduced. For the same service life, I am comparing this with this. If return period is increased, probability of exceedance of characteristic load is reduced. What we want is this statement. I do not want that the characteristic load should exceed. That is mean desire in the design is it not. The probability of exceedance of characteristic load should be as minimum as possible. I can do this with two ways. I can reduce the service life of the structure or increase the return period of the load. Now, what is the effect in the design? If you want to calculate a load whose return period is very large, what does it mean? 1 by r is the probability of exceedance of this load in, a, in any one year. It means only 1 percent. Your load should be calculated accurately. Because the magnitude of that so called characteristic load should not be exceeded in any year by 1 percent. It means your accuracy should be very, very high. If you are not able to compute for certain class of loads that level of accuracy for example, earthquake loads, for example, ice loads cannot calculate, then it is always better design the structure for a lower service life. When you have got high variability in the return periods, is that clear? It is because of this reason primarily offshore structures and marine structures are reduced for the service life. Now, once you increase the service life with the same return period, same return period increase the service life, same return period increase the service life. You have designed it for 10 years, you are retaining the platform for 10 more years. So, increase the service life, you are encountering a higher probability of exceedance of the load. So, that is dangerous. Is that clear? We are clear. Let us remove this. We have one more class of load that is called accidental load, which is A class loads, accidental loads. They are caused because of collision, explosion and fire, dropped objects, objects may fall from the crane hook because of some mismanagement during operation can cause impact loads, these are all accidental loads. Now, we need to identify the characteristic load for such accidental loads. 
okay. So, the characteristic load depends on depends on the type of investigation you are doing. and the method of operation. Method of operation, investigation, you are looking closely for any possibility of failure of the structure under the explosion. You are looking for any possibility of exceedance of accident loads during collision and impact of ships or any vessels in the platform. So, you can pick up the characteristic load accordingly depending upon what investigation you want to do. So, there is no rule what multiplier you must use for the loads. I think you all agree for the load it is multiplier for the strength it is denominator. Okay. So, we are reducing the strength increasing the load that is the philosophy what you are doing in the design. We have a load, we multiply by some number, increase the load. We have a material, account for some variability, decrease the strength. Combine them, do the design. Okay? That is called ultimate load design or ultimate limit state design. Now, let us talk about load combinations. As we all agree, several loads act on marine structures simultaneously. Okay, we can give examples wave load, wind load, current, impact. We can also say wave load, earthquake load, we can also say wave load, current load, ice load, etc. So, there are several loads which combine together to act on marine structures. Okay. Now, what are those factors which will lead to difficulties in assessing this combination. In defining the load combination, you have following difficulties. First difficulty is the determination of load factor gamma f1 for various loads. Just now we saw gamma f has got three components gamma f 1, gamma f 2 and gamma f 3 that is what you have seen in the last lecture. What is gamma f 1 addressing at? See gamma f which is the safety factor for loads has got partial safety factors which are not explicitly told and shown in many of the international codes. It is very difficult to assess them. What we said is gamma f 1, gamma f 2 and gamma f 3. This I think probably it was equation number I think it is 3. So, gamma f 1 was addressing what are those parameters which is addressing gamma f 1 sorry deviation of 
deviation from characteristic load that is the deviation. Okay. What do you mean by characteristic load? The load should not exceed 95 percent of its possibility. Whatever you say the value of the magnitude may be 1000 kilo Newton within the return period of that load 1000 kilo Newton load should be acting. The variation cannot be more than 5 percent 95 percent it is correct 5 percent error that is what characteristic load is. What is the deviation gamma f will take care of that is it 5 percent is it 3 percent 1 percent 0.1 percent because p category loads that is permanent loads will have a very less deviation because they are calculated with a very high accuracy. Some international codes say for example, Euro codes say that the variation cannot be more than 2 percent or 2.235 percent. Okay. So, what is that variation or what is the deviation? Gamma F2 talks about the combination factor and gamma 3 sorry gamma F3 talks about the modeling error. So, the very difficulty is to determine the load factor gamma F1 for various loads just now I said P can have an accuracy of a very high order. So, P can have a deviation less than 1 percent we are just guessing whereas, live load can have a variation from 1 percent to 5 percent large variation and we just now said the deformation loads will have the maximum variation of 5 percent is it not and so accidental loads will have the maximum variation of 5 percent and so on. So, it is very difficult to fix what deviation your load will have why because all of them are acting together that is the problem here we are talking about the combination effect. Okay. So, it is very difficult to address which deviation you can associate with what kind of load when they are combined. The second difficulty is what is the probability that the characteristic value of all the loads will act simultaneously that is again a catch. See characteristic load we already understood what it is. What is the probability that the characteristic value of all the loads will act simultaneously. Okay. So, this is also not computable it is very difficult. Therefore, for design we can say the combination can be given by a simple expression which is S of gamma F 1 or let us say gamma F p for p gamma F L for L gamma f d for d gamma f e for e and gamma f a for e equation number 8. Gamma f is the factor P or the capital P is addressing the factor associated with F1. Small p is a factor associated with the combined effect of characteristic value acting together, that is p, and so on and so forth. If you know this, multiply this factor with your with your load you will get your design load. Hypothetically that is the equation is it not. If you know this combination effect multiply that factor with your load applied on the structure you will get what is called the design load this is the design load.
this is as far as the f 1 is concerned. Now, of course, certain codes give you some advice <coughs> on this combination effects, we will talk about that. <coughs> the combination effects are advised in different codes in different manner, let us quickly see them here. If you look at Euro code, I am looking for type of loading. The effect on the structure and gamma f recommended value. <coughs> so, we say permanent and variable. Permanent load, you already know, it is a pre class loading, okay, we already know this. Whereas, variable loads are actually addressing the L class loading and environmental loads. L is a live load and E is the environmental category of the load, it is called variable loading. For if you want to look at the most unfavorable effect, if you are designing the structure for the most unfavorable effect, then use gamma f at 1.35. If you are looking for an favorable effect on the structure, then design this with gamma f of 1.0. For the variable loads, you are looking for most unfavorable effect, design it with 1.5 and for unfavorable sorry for favorable there is no recommendation given in the euro code okay so you will now agree looking at the load combination to some extent they have been explicit in addressing what should be the value for p and what should be the value for l and e etc in the course okay you can see that here they are starting working out, is that clear? But still I would say that this number is a combined effect of two things, what is the two things? One, what is the deviation of each one of them causing favorable or unfavorable effect on the structure and what is the probability that the characteristic value of these loads will occur simultaneously addressing these two factors together euro code has advised the effect on the structure remember this is a very important part i am not talking about the effect of loading i am talking about what are the consequence of this load on the structure that is i said load effects okay if you want to get most unfavorable effect use this combination or this multiplier if you want to get a favorable effect use this multiplier and so on so forth okay that's what the euro code says AP, RP, there is a code by name LRFD, load resistant factor design, this code is now under revision, okay. I should write it here, but still nevertheless there is no harm in knowing what the code suggested, okay. it is under revision now. This code says define gamma f for purpose of loading, it is a different category, you says what is the purpose I say purpose not the load, then type of load and of course, the load factor, he is using a different symbol, I am using it for my convenience. Okay. The symbol used for load factor in API is different from gamma f, but I am using it for my convenience. Okay. I can even write here load factor. 
you want to calculate the internal effects on the structure due to loads. Can you give me any one classical example of internal effect of structure on members due to load? Any one example? fracture creep i mean the examples internal effect deformation it can be many many for all loads use a factor of 1.3 you want to do it for load out i think you understand what is a load out load out is a term of phase of installation in jacket platforms okay that's called load out launch and lift if you're looking for these purposes because you should design the structural system during erection and construction loads also if you're looking for this as your purpose then for gravity loads plus Environmental loads use a factor of 1.35. This is for 1.30. The other option is for a combination of gravity loads and environmental you can also use a value of 1.35 if environmental loads are predominant than gravity loads for example complaint structures for towing depending upon the purpose for gravity loads use a value of 1.10 for environmental loads use a value of 1.35 this is the order what api recommends for load factor depending upon what is the purpose you're looking at the design Let us see what DNB does. If you look at DNB code, offshore standards, DNB. OS C 101. OS stands for offshore standard, C stands for the category 101. They say the combination of loads are directly addressed for different load categories. P L, E, D, and E. I think you, I do not have to elaborate them. You already know these categories. This is permanent load, live load, environmental load, deformation load, accident loads. If you are looking for an ordinary operation. this can be 1.3, this can be 1.3, 0.7, 0.8, you need not have to consider accident loads at all. If you are looking for extreme conditions,
then also you need not have to consider this. Because the structure should be designed for accident loads explicitly. Okay. So, now we have seen different factors affecting the ultimate load design in terms of load estimates, in terms of material strength. There is a very important combination or very important aspect which affects the material strength, which we will see now. It's nothing but the composition of the material, okay. mostly we use steel, but steel has got variety of composition while manufacturing steel. What are those effects? Number one. Number two, what is the size and uh, effect of shape and size on your gamma m factors? Okay. We are looking at the factors affecting my safety factors or safety estimates in my material strength. So, we are talking about the fabrication factors affecting gamma m material strength actually. So, there are globally two aspects which can be addressed in this heading. One is what we call geometric effects. Other is what we call mechanical effects. Mechanical effects means residual strength or residual stresses, imperfections etcetera. Let us see few of them, we are not looking into all properties which will affect the strength, we look at the carbon content that is one of the important aspect in steel. So, if you look at the percentage carbon content, I am looking for percentage carbon, this is my elongation epsilon. I think you should say this is Young's modulus, not epsilon. Let us say I start from 0, let us say 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5 and 1.7, whereas this is of course 0, 250. 500, 750 and 1000. I am talking about the variation of tensile strength you will see that the tensile strength keeps on increasing with increase in percentage of carbon content till 1.5 then dips off this tensile strength. If you look at the maximum elongation of the steel, it decreases with increase in carbon content. So, 
this is elongation. So, one can see here maximum elongation decreases with percentage carbon increase. Tensile strength increases with percentage carbon increase up to certain value, after which it drops. To look at the composition of steel and their components which will contribute to the factors affecting the strength. Let us divide this into ion, carbon and another alloys. So, the alloys can be manganese, silicon, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulphur, carbon increases tensile strength. yield strength and toughness, whereas decreases ductility, maximum elongation as just now you saw and weldability or the welding characteristics are decreased with the increase in carbon. Whereas, manganese increases tensile strength increases weldability silicon increases toughness yield strength and and tensile strength whereas decreases maximum strain and decreases cold form weldability. When it is hot then it is different, hydrogen decreases ductility and weldability. Phosphorus decreases toughness and ductility. Sulphur decreases ductility, weldability, and of course, toughness. I think when you talk about toughness, you understand that. So, I am talking about the notch toughness, okay. That is how we measure toughness. nitrogen 
decreases the resistance against brittle failure. It means it promotes brittle failure. Carbon increases of course, the corrosion resistance. The last component which affects the strength of material which accounts for variability in ultimate load design is the type of loading or I should say behavior of members under axial and transverse loads. This behavior of the member itself is a very important factor which affects gamma ion. To understand or explain this, we will take a very simple example. We will take a steel column, both ends hinge. and apply a pure axial load to this column. Okay. The column will start buckling, we will have a maximum deformation y at its center. The load carrying capacity of the column will be keep on increasing until a critical value which we call as P critical. How do you identify a P critical value? P critical value is that value till this is reached. No geometric deformation will occur. Once this value is reached, the behavior changes. this point is called bifurcation point. I can try to plot this bifurcation point graphically like this. Let us say I am trying to plot P versus Y, P that is the load carrying capacity of the column versus its Y value which is having a permanent deformation. So, primarily as you keep on applying the load, there is no y which is distinctly seen, it will be keep on getting a higher and higher value until this reaches what we call PCR. After it reaches at PCR, it will undergo a very large deflection, it is an ideal case. This point is what we call bifurcation point, it is an ideal situation. Now, because of the presence of the alloy elements, what you just now saw, this behavior will not be occurring, it will land up in slightly different behavior, which has initial deformation and then is what we call as a real behavior. 
the real behavior is actually due to the presence of alloy elements in the material. So, there are many reasons why the real behavior is different from that of the ideal behavior. There can be imperfections. there can be deficiency in construction material imperfection can be geometric what do you mean by geometric the load applied is not purely axial that is called geometric imperfection the imperfection can be even manufacturing what do you mean by manufacturing the member is not vertical okay it's not purely vertical there's a defect in the manufacturing itself and so on so the presence of imperfections and the deficiency in construction material affects the behavior under different loads axial what we have seen here which will also account for partial reduction in strength of the material which should be considered in the ultimate load design in gamma m. Okay. It is not only the material property, the way in which the members behave under axial as you have seen here will also affect the gamma m computation in your ultimate load design methodology. Okay. In addition, let us see what is the effect on the behavior of the member under transverse load. this may main plate these are my stiffeners i am putting them at an equal spacing which i call them as ls which is spacing of the stiffeners and applying vertical load and so on. Okay, I am applying vertical load to them. Now, the basic problem with this kind of arrangement which is a common arrangement in marine structures you can see I can give a very classical example of this whenever you got reinforced concrete jetties or even steel plate jetties which are facing the water load this is my water side hydrodynamic loading coming on the facing of the jetty instead of constructing a single plate to resist the hydrodynamic loading. I will like to give a stiffness in between thinking that this stiffening arrangement will try to protect this main plate 
from the lateral load in addition to the self weight which is the gravity load acting on the structure. Because the jetty has to have a deck and the deck will have a load that is what I am indicating here and there will be lateral load also because of hydrodynamic action because of the waves. Okay. In such cases L s plays a very important role. If L s is very high, if the spacing of the stiffness is very high, this will cause the local buckling of the plate. Okay. The plate will start buckling. buckle and bend between the stiffness. So, because of the lateral load acting at this point very high intensity. even stiffness will also buckle. You may wonder that how the behavior of the plate and the stiffener will affect gamma m. Now, gamma m is the uncertainty which is accounted for the material strength variation in the design. Okay. Thinking hypothetically the material has no geometric imperfection no manufacturing defect and no variation in his yield strength, things modulus etcetera. Just by arrangement of the member like this, some loading will be preluded, some behavior will be preluded which will cause reduction in load carrying capacity. You would have designed it for an axial strength of x kilo Newton. Before receiving x kilo Newton at the bifurcation point, the structure or the member will buckle and x kilo newton will be y which will be lesser than x much less than that. it means there will be a preluding of buckling before bending happens or before crushing happens this is this arrangement has caused this arrangement has caused this failure because it is actually uh, uh, subjected to the behavior of the structure under load combination so we are looking at the load combination we wanted to see what would be the worst scenario at which the loads can be combined along with the material strength to attain the maximum safety in my design. So, hypothetically material gamma m is not only related to material, it is also related to behavior of the member under load combination. So, it is a very complex phenomenon. You would say that I want to design a member for a pure axial load depending upon the cylinderness effect of the member that is r by y value r is the radius of gyration and y is the thickness okay. r by y value or l by d value depending upon the cylinderness ratio of the member before it reaches the critical point or the bifurcation point in your p y curve the member will start buckling. So, this will cause reduction in p c r that is why in ideal behavior you see this difference. Okay. So, this difference not only comes from geometric imperfection, not only comes from material imperfection or material deficiency, not only comes from contribution of different constituents in the material, but also comes from behavior of the member under the combination of loads. Is it clear? So, it is not the question of only material to be seen separately, only load to be seen separately, then combine them to see the safety factor, it is not that. Okay. So, it is important that we will discuss it in the next lecture. Okay. So, we will talk about plastic design in the next lecture.